today I want to talk to you about rafters and one of the important things is what you want to have in terms of the the slope of the roof and for looks. So a lot of times a lot of people who are building these tiny houses will build uh, more of a shed style roof so that they can get more head space in their loft area and then there's some people that actually want to have more of a gable roof with a, a, a higher slope so that it adds more character on the outside so you just have to to ask yourself what what do you want your tiny house to look like and uh, first thing first let's just take a look here I'm gonna draw you out something here 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 depending where you are uh, whether in the States or in Canada, you want to find out what is the maximum height of your tiny house trailer. Just like, just like when you're building a house, you want to find out if there's a certain height that you can build it at, if it's a certain municipal bylaw, or um, you want to find out how high or what pitch of roof you can get out of there. So for me, I would love to build our tiny house that has a real charactered gable roof that has a, a steeper slope um, that is connecting into a barreled roof type of uh, a barreled roof where it's curved and I think it's gonna look awesome so basically what you want to do to figure out the pitch of your slope is just look up online and find out how high you're allowed to build it so basically here in our area or in Canada the highest the maximum height you can go for trailer height is 4.15 meters high so that is so that you can fit underneath every bridge and so what you want to do is you want to figure out okay with your trailer if that's the height if that's the height of the trailer or the tallest point you just basically want to find out how tall is the top of your let's say that's a wheel you want to find out if this how tall is the from the ground to the top of your deck of the trailer and then what you want to do is you want to find out you want to find out how tall is your wall going to be so typically how you decide that is if you're going to have a loft you want to be able to have walking headroom underneath your loft so you don't feel like you're crouched um, or if you're really tall like let's say you're from Holland and you're like six foot three you don't want to build your loft coming down to six foot because then you're having to duck underneath there all the time so what you need to do is figure out what height that is and for me a typical door height is 80 inches so I'm gonna make my loft um, seven feet so that allows that allows me to have some nice headroom underneath the loft but at the same time I don't want to go so high because then what happens is if I have a gabled roof here a gable roof it shortens this space down so what you really want to do is you want to maximize all the space that you can get so what you do is you add the trailer height for an example this one that we have is two feet and then you add the wall height which is I picked seven feet and five and a half inches and you take the the height that they give you from the ground all the way to the top the max height which is 4.15 meters now to get that into feet one meter equals 3.28 feet if you multiply 4.15 meters times 3.28 to eight it will give you the foot the feet the total max feet which would be 13 feet and that'll be 13.612 so now you take that total distance and you minus trailer the wall and that will give you the height from the wall up to the top of the gable so what it worked out for me was with all these measurements it worked out to be um, 49 inches 
and three quarters. So I don't actually want to to build my rafter all the way to that height because what you have to take into consideration is the build up of um, the sheathing on the rafter and also the thickness of the roof. So I made it 48 inches. So now at that point what you want to do is you want to figure out how wide is your trailer. So once you know how wide is your trailer and divide that in half you will have what you want to do is A squared, B squared equals C squared. So now that we have this number, you take the, the width of your trailer, divide it in half, you'll get that number, and you take this number, which we got by minusing the wall and the trailer height, with the total height that gave you this number and then what you do is you do a squared plus b squared equals c squared if you work all that out that will give you the theory point from the outside of your wall to the top of your rafter that will give you actually that that distance from there so from there now you have a, a working length that you can that you know how long your rafter is going to be and to figure out what slope that would be what you do is you do similar triangle which would be um, just to explain for an example to figure out uh, the pitch of a roof I don't know if you've heard of a 312 roof or 412 or 512 basically all that is is that every 12 inches you come across the ceiling if it's a 312 roof, it rises on the rafter 3 inches. So how to figure out what slope you have, you just do a similar triangle. You have the run on the bottom, and we don't know the rise yet for what to hold, what to hold on the framing square. But what we do know is we know, we know the a squared which is the run so you put that number there so for an example mine was uh, 50 and a quarter 50 and a quarter which would be 0.125 you take that 50 0.125 and then you know this height which was we figured I figured out to be 48 inches so now what you do is you you t uh, 12 times 48 divided by 50.125 gives you X. And that worked out to be um, 11 and a half. So X equals 11 and a half. So now what you have is now you have something, uh, numbers that you can hold on your framing square. So how to move forward on that. Um, basically, this would be 11 and a half rise by 12 so that's actually a pretty that's a pretty steep um, pitch for this tiny house um, if you're wanting to do a loft in there and it's going to be the main sleeping area you would actually would want to design it where you would have a um, a 312 or something that's not as steep so that you can get more headroom but one of the things to consider that the the more the smaller you go down in, in the pitch of the roof, the thicker your rafters need to be to support any kind of snow load or any and uh, to figure that out, basically you just put these numbers in the the building code of the area that you're in and it will tell you how thick that needs to be. Because of the pitch of this roof and the run, it's not an issue. Basically I'm allowed to have three and a half for the the minimum depth for my rafter but what I want to do is because I want to do a curved rafter what I want to do is I want my rafter to not just be straight I want it to actually look like this where it curves and then it comes to a round instead of a point and then it curves back down so that's how I want my rafter to look like so it's what I'm going to do now is just show you how to do a curved rafter. So we're going to work with the numbers 
um, if you follow those steps um, and you get, get your theory line for your rafter, you, it's just basically a matter of layout to get it. So what you want to do, when in doubt, lay it out. So what I did here is, if you, you can see, this is the top deck of the tiny house. So the outside of the plywood is the outside of my framed walls. So I'm able to lay out exactly how I want my rafter to look like on the ground. When it goes up, that's how it looked like. So I took, uh, I drew a line from, from here all the way across. And what I did was I measured from the corner down 48 because that's the maximum height I'm working with on both sides. And then I snapped a center line there. And then from there, you could literally hook on to the outside to the top of the point there. That's your theory line right there. So from there, you could literally lay out how you want your curved rafter to be. And how you do it is... Um, here, I'll just show you uh, here. If you can see this curved rafter here, I used my theory line, which ended up being right there, and I measured down so that this thickness is the same thickness on the diagonal that a 2x4 wall would be, so that when my 2x4 wall is landing here, inside the ceiling it's lining up so that all my sheathing will line up on the, on, from the wall to, this, to the ceiling. So now, what I did was, I want the outside of my curved rafter to, to have a curve, but on the inside, because in tiny houses, because it moves, you don't want to use drywall or anything that would crack a joint. So basically, you're doing paneling with kind of a board and batten style, or just things that, uh, that can allow um, a little bit of movement as it goes down the road. So... I didn't want to have to do a follow that same curve on the inside and the reason is is that it is it's a lot more harder to do um, panel work on a curved surface on the outside I'm not so concerned because I'm gonna pick building um, roofing material that can follow that curve on the inside I'm just gonna use plywood so I allowed myself to have a straight line now the thing to consider when you're doing a curved rafter is that you the lowest part of your curve you want to make sure that that thickness is the thickness um, depending on your area that the building code would say so right now three and a half is accept acceptable I'm actually bringing it down to three and a half but as it comes up it goes wider at the top and as it or at the bottom there and as it goes to the top it goes round and how to lay that out is once you get your theory lines and you lay it out actually right on the ground you can just take um, a thin piece of aluminum and just bend it and you can just literally make this the curve and the style that you you want if you wanted to you could actually go round kind of having like a a, a barrel look but or you can go in and that's kind of what I decided to do and you just lay it out and at the top basically once you have that laid out cut out an exact one so that every single rafter is exactly the same size and same profile and lay it out on your theory lines and see how that looks so basically what this is right here is I'm gonna have a 1 by 8 or sorry a, a 2 by 6 ridge so I'm wanting to mint um, minus the thickness of that on the rafter. So now how to get all the uh, the cut lines is this is where you use your framing square and this is why it's important how to figure out what you want to do for if you're doing a 312 or 412 or a 612 um, or 1212. A 1212 is basically a 45 degree angle. Um, this one works out to be almost a 1212. It's 11.5 rise and 12 inch. So basically what you do is hold yourself on the 12 inches. Please don't judge my framing square. It's seen a lot, but you know what? Even though it's ugly, it still functions the same as a brand new one. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Okay, here we go. Um, you hold yourself on the 11.5 and, and the 12 inch right there. And 
this this is the run, this is the rise. So at the top of the ridge, you want to make a line that would be on the, ri the, the 11 and a half or the rise size. So you just move that up like that, and then once that on the 11 and a half and the 12, you make your line on your on your rafter right there. And then you do the same thing. You move that down the rafter, keeping on the 12 and the 11 and a half, or whatever your run and rise is. And and don't mark the rise, but mark the, basically this would be kind of like the seat cut kind of a thing. You just mark it right there, and then that's your cut. And then from there, um, the outside of the wall, um, normally with rafters, they do little seat cuts and they have tails that extend out, but because I'm building to the max width with my tiny house trailer. I don't I'm not allowed to actually have an overhang. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to design it so that the end of my rafters is flush with the wall and then I'm going to flash it so that there's so it has a good um water seal there. So from there basically that's how I designed this was that the end of my rafters basically the it, it is flush with the wall. So then this line you just with a 90 degree just mark up like that. And there you go that is the rough uh, dimensions and the rough layout for how to get a rafter, a curved rafter and I hope you're having a good day now. Anyway, have a wonderful day.